All right, everyone, welcome back to a special edition of the Express Entry Law Facebook page, EE Live Q&A. Um, I'll wait a few minutes for people to catch up here and to confirm that they are present. Um, I'm getting up far too early to be in here to do this this morning, but uh, uh, bear with me. So we'll just let a few more minutes pass here now that uh, the Facebook feed is, is live. And uh, if I could get some feedback from those of you who are uh, on the call right now, um, just let me know how the audio is. All right. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Natish. All right, so here's what's happened. Um, I'm going to switch my screen over to um, to share my screen so that you can see. So as you can see from here, we have this lovely post that was uh, kindly posted by Syed Hassan Hussein Zaidi. And the question is, really? <laughs> and so what he's done is he's provided a link to... Um, the fine folks over at Canada Visa who are pumping out the CIC news uh, bulletins, at least their version of what's happening within immigration. Um, uh, I wish I was large enough to have a separate team of people just designed to push out notifications as soon as they are released by the government, but I don't, so I will respond to this. So um, Syed basically said, really, is this possible? Scores as low as 199. And on the surface, this kind of a, a notification sounds unbelievable, given the fact we've never crossed over the threshold of 400. But um, I'm just going to blow this up so that it's full screen and you can see here. So basically, what this is indicating is that we had a draw on May the 26th. And then if you follow down, I'll see if I can enlarge this, make it a little bit bigger and easier for everyone to see. So after we had the... Um, Th this was posted, there were just a bunch of other comments, and I'm going to go back here, make sure I'm still on it. There were a bunch of other comments with people that were saying, this is fraud, this is a joke, there's no way it's possible. And, um, you know, some people were trying to explain that this draw just relates to certain categories. But as you, as you follow through here, um, <laughs> there, there's a number of comments, and some of them actually required me to, to kind of you know, indicate. So ANSI said, is it true? Um, and then right here, uh, Usman says, nah, I don't think so. That means half the world is going to Canada. So basically I said, I guess I better explain this to everyone because there's a lot of misconceptions that are out there. So let's go straight to the Immigration Canada website here. And this is the site. So if you're wondering, you know, what the draws were, what the breakdown is, how many people were drawn based on their scores. It's all right here. And uh, I'm going to put this in the comment section, a link to it, so that you can all go there yourself. There's no magic or no secret about this. But it's Express Entry Rounds of Invitations. This is where the ministerial instructions are that the immigration minister posts whenever they do a new round of invitations. And so this one occurred on May 26th. And if you click on this link, you can see the full text. But they've done a good job here at trying to explain what is going on. So if you look here, you'll see right at the top, Provincial Nominee Program. So they have the regulatory authority to issue nominations for only specific programs. This one here is just for the Provincial Nominee Program. And in, in essence, the minister um, has actually released two separate ministerial instructions to cover both the Federal Skilled Trade Program and the Provincial Nominee Program. So what's missing from this? Well, the categories that have traditionally driven express entry, and that's the Federal Skilled Worker Program and the Canadian Experience Class. So if you have met the eligibility requirements for both of those, this round of invitations doesn't apply to you. So if you had a score of 775 points for the purposes of a Provincial Nominee Program, um, there were only 143 people that were issued nominations based on this. So what does this mean? Well, 775 points basically means that they're getting the 600 points for the provincial nomination because that's for, uh, for support from a province. 
you get 600 comprehensive ranking system points. So the cutoff for these individuals, and for sure there was more that had more points than 775, but essentially what it means is the, a person that had human capital factors totaling 175 were eligible to receive an invitation to apply. And so that's what this is saying. So likely there were um, some individuals, whether it was employment-based or whatever, but that were given nominations. And now, if you go down here, this is the one that I think is the most important. If you remember from one of my previous, la previous Facebook Live uh, EE Q&As, I talked a little bit about the breakdown over the, over the last number of months, um, which programs were, were driving the ship, per se, with express entry. And in the case of uh, the Federal Skilled Trade Program, it was less than a percent. So it was so low, the percentage of candidates who were eligible as, as skilled trades all over the world that could actually qualify. And there's a number of reasons for it. And, and in future uh, Q&As, maybe I'll take time to break down the Federal Skilled Trade Program so people understand. But the reality is they rarely rank very high when it comes to human capital because uh, trade education abroad is not really even considered. And often trade-level individuals don't have a really high level of, um, of, of English and, and other factors. But you can see 199 points is what they needed to qualify. And this is, this is straight um, you know, human capital factors. And so there were 400 invitations issued. So really, this draw was quite small in comparison to the 3,000 that we typically get. This one was 543 invitations sent out. But it's important to understand now that the government does consider the Federal Skilled Trade Program a relevant program. And I would not doubt in the future that more people, now they realize that there's actually a chance of, of being uh, issued an ITA if they're a trade level worker. This threshold right here, 199 points, and this is still pretty small. I'll try and enlarge it for you. This 199 points here that we have, I suspect it's, it's going to go up for sure. But this is important. It's important to note. So let's take a look at this. So as of May 19th, 2017, you can see the breakdown. You can see where most of the nominations are being issued. So, and this is the number of, right here you can see, um, this is the, the people that are actually in the pool right now as of May 19th, 2017. And so if you go down here, you can see that the bulk of people are actually sitting right here, 351 to 400. So, and then 401 to 410, these people are patiently waiting for those, the, the numbers, uh, the ITA numbers to drop. And you can see there's not as many here and in these ones from 411 up to really 450 because that's where all the draws have been happening, right in this area from 51 right down to um, 51 people in the pool right now, but from 400, 450 down to 411. So we'll see what happens, but that's why there's not many candidates in the pool because these are probably all fresh candidates or people that have had to decline the invitation because they weren't ready to accept it. But there is a big volume of people that are getting ready if that point threshold drops below 400. So that was the purpose of this uh, Express Entry Live Q&A right now. Um, I'm going to flip back here, if I can, to, uh, to the video section. And I just wanted to share a few other things with you. Um, some people have been noticing that I've been posting a lot about this right here. And in each Q&A, you can consider it being sponsored by the Canadian Immigration Institute, which is a, a, um, which is a resource that I created for people who are often outside of Canada and essentially can't afford uh, Canadian dollar legal fees. And so I created this course to assist you in figuring out exactly what to do. So I see here Jatinder says, what is the requirements for express entry, sir? Well, right here, I walk you through every aspect of express entry from the beginning all the way through to the end and uh, answer questions, explain how you qualify, explain how you can increase the likelihood of getting drawn. All of these things are built in here. And this whole course and, and the whole purpose behind me setting up this express entry law Facebook page 
um, is to provide an opportunity for me to share information, free information with people, and to provide a safe, secure place where people can trust the information that's being uh, shared, and to help one another as you navigate the system. So I'm just going to flip back here for a second. So when you are... Um, uh, when you're when you're looking for you know what is this guide Mark is talking about this is it here, and you can access it through a couple different ways. CanadianImmigrationInstitute.com is one, um, or or I'll provide a link into the comment section where you can uh, where you can subscribe, and it's a simple monthly subscription for thirty nine dollars a month. And so that uh, this Q and A and all the other ones are are basically being sponsored by this. And then, as you can see, as we go throughout the week, periodically, I jump on wherever I can, try to moderate, but with, let's see, how many people do we have now? Let's scroll up to the top here. I'm pretty sure we have over 22,000 people that are now a part of this group. And I'm going to shrink this down. Yes, 22,304 people are now a part of our Express Entry Law Facebook group. So um, if you would like to share a question with me uh, to be used on future Q&As, then what you're going to do is, um, I'm just going to jump back once again here, uh, you're going to type this in the subject line, and you're going to send me an email uh, to, and I'll type my email address in again, and hopefully I can get this right. There we go. So you're going to send an email to here with this in your subject line, EE Live Q&A. And that is where I will know that you want me to consider your question to be addressed on future Q&As. Now, right now, we're trying to do this at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time um, on every Thursday of the week. So far, I'm going to leave it at that stage um, because I'll be honest, 7 in the morning is just too freaking early for me. <laughs> so, but I wanted to, to address this round of invitation because it was so new. You know, we, this is, although I think they did do one just strictly for Canadian experience class in the very beginning of Express Entry, this is the first time we've actually seen designated federal skilled trade program and PNP for that matter. So uh, thanks so much for everyone who has uh, attended this short little special edition. I didn't want it to, to last too long. Um, if you have a question, uh, please don't hesitate to send me uh, a question that you want to be considered. But many people are actually sending me direct email inquiries to this email address and asking me to assess whether they qualify or not. And as a Canadian immigration lawyer, I actually charge for that. So when it's general questions that are of benefit to the 22,000 people that are on our, our Express Century uh, Law Facebook page, then I can share. I'm okay to share answers there that are of benefit because I can benefit more people at once. But if you are sending me uh, an inquiry or you want to engage my services, then what you have to do is go to, um, go to my contact page on our firm website, and I will switch over to that as well, which is right here. And if I blow it up, I'm not sure if I... No, so this is it right here. And then you can schedule a consultation with me. And as a Canadian immigration lawyer, um, like I said, my fees are in Canadian dollars, and I charge $200 plus GST, sales tax, 5%, which equates to about $210 for a 30-minute consult. And in most cases, I can answer... Uh, pretty much all of your questions about Express Entry in that 30 minutes. But I do charge that. And so um, you can go to um, this link right here. And if I go back, I'll post it just so that you can see it a little bit easier um, once again within, uh, within this video. This is where if you want to actually send me... Um, well, that's not too easy to read, is it? Anyways, if you want to actually send me... A, um, an inquiry to set up a consultation, this is where you do it. And I'll put it in the, in the comments section below as well. All right. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for, uh, for, for being here, for attending this live Facebook event. I know many more of you will be watching it as it's recorded. Um, I'll also indicate that I try to pin it at the top of our Facebook uh, Express Entry Law page so that it's easier to find. But if you're looking on your handheld... Um, yeah, if you're watching it uh, or, or on this on your phone, your iPhone or whatever your Android is, um, you'll actually need to click on pinned post so that you can see. And every Express Entry Q&A that I do, 
um, I post the new one up and pin it to the top. Otherwise, you'll need to just scroll down. But uh, I hope you've appreciated this. And um, the next live Facebook um, Q&A will be on Express Entry will be Thursday, this Thursday at 7 p.m. So I look forward to seeing you all there.